Hello, welcome to the Monday, December 2nd, 2019 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich, and today I'm recording from San Francisco, California. This weekend, we got two diaries to talk about. First one by Pratt about an ancient Tesla sample that he found. This sample arrives disguised as an installer for the messaging application Discord. Brad came across the sample via the AnyRun sandbox, so he already had the packet capture file from AnyRun and didn't have to create his own. Agent Tesla is an information stealer and it typically exfiltrates information as an email. Now, to avoid networks that block port 25, Agent Tesla uses the submit port on 587, which is usually allowed outbound unlike port 25. And well, uh, lucky for Pratt, the SMTP traffic for Agent Tesla was not encrypted, at least not for this variant. Looks like uh, this makes a nice quick sample to test basic packet analysis skills in Wireshark. So if you are interested in that, uh, feel free to follow the link to the PCAP that Brad lists in his diary. Like most malware I come across these days, again, this malware does not actually exploit any vulnerabilities per se, but just requires that the user cooperates and installs it. Now, the second diary from this weekend comes from Russ's tool reviews. This time, he is looking at Soren Eye. I also have this tool called the Eye of Soren, based on well, uh, where the name really comes from, a tool that searches files on a system for sensitive information. Agent Tesla, for example, limits itself to exfiltrating information from a few very specific well-known locations, but all too often users keep Word or Excel documents on their systems or on file shares with sensitive data like passwords. Soren I will find these documents and assist in exfiltrating the data. The exfiltrated data volume is quite small as a result because it just picks those documents that may be interesting and doesn't, like some other malware, exfiltrate everything and then the recipient is sort of sifting through the data. Soren I does search various document types and can also scan network shares. Well, and if you thought that uh, Y2K is behind us, you're not using Splunk. Splunk has sort of a Y2K plus 20 buck. That's right. Uh, Splunk is having some issues with dates next year and you need to patch quickly. The issue indeed is related to Y2K in that it only affects two digit years. There is a datetime.xml file that defines how to parse date and if the date is two digits, then it only allows for years up to, well, 20, so 2020. Another issue will become apparent on September 13th, 2020. After that, the Unix epoch reaches 1.6 billion second. Apparently, Splunk will no longer recognize timestamps. At that point, it does look like it expects a one and five as the first two digits. For those unable to use the provided patches that update Splunk itself, Splunk made also available just an update for the datetime.xml file. So you can just replace that file and pretty much avoid these issues if you can't just apply the patch directly. And Google published its quarterly threat analysis group report. And this report summarizes attacks Google suggests are originated from more sophisticated attackers, in particular state-sponsored attackers. Google currently tracks a total of 270 government-backed hacking groups and associates them with 50 different 
countries. Many countries have several distinct groups who operate mostly independent from each other and have different objectives. 90% of the attacks are phishing emails that attempt to steal credentials. In particular, of course, attackers always like to get those Gmail and Google credentials. These can then be used to manipulate Gmail settings or to impersonate the user. The range of targets is as wide as the motivations of these attacks, including journalists, politicians, dissidents, activists, anybody that a nation state may be somewhat interested in. In some cases, the goal is to spread also disinformation, which of course may be the reason why sort of activists and journalists are being targeted here. Google did not see a significant change in this activity over the last couple years, actually. Uh, within plus minus 10%, I think is what the report states. And Google will notify users if it believes that they are the target of more sophisticated attacks. Also note that if you're receiving an alert, it only indicates that the attack was attempted. Your account may not be compromised yet, but probably not a bad idea to take a look at what's going on. And of course, always, occasionally review your security settings and Google does offer some nice tools for that, even if you did not receive one of these warnings. And well, uh, this is it for today. Thanks for listening. And if you happen to be in San Francisco this week, see me for some stickers. I may also leave some on the Sans brochure table if I can find it. Thanks and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.